That Georgia candy roaster that was the worst. It had the most mold, the most mildew, the most nasty looking. Um, and once I cut all that away, that's the inside, right? And there's the outside. Right, so yeah, I had to sacrifice some of it. And it would have been better to have done this uh, a few weeks ago before it was this bad. Hey, it's Greg here at MaritimeGuardian.com and I thought I'd do a video on the different types of squash I chose to grow uh, last season, 2019, and they're all in storage. And my, uh, my experience with these different varieties, and by virtue of talking about that, uh, speaking about the different considerations you might want to uh, run through when you're considering which squash to grow, if, if squash is an important vegetable for you. It's, it's seed buying season, I guess you could call it that, right? January, February, it's when we plant our gardens out and buy our seeds. And, and I guess I should mention um, uh, Vessi Seeds has, uh, again, given uh, my viewers a uh, coupon code. If you want to get free shipping on everything but oversized items, use the coupon code GAVS20 for the 2020 year. Um, basically, the, the deal is free shipping on anything you buy, as long as there's a pack of seeds in the order. So um, the details are in the description box. So I grew three different kinds of squash uh, last year. I grew uh, Georgia Candy Roaster, uh, Blue Hubbard, or war sorry, Warded Hubbard, and uh, this sort of traditional, uh, I don't know what these are called, it's some sort of Ukrainian word. I got these seeds years ago and I just keep saving the seeds every year. But they're kind of useful because you can Turn them, uh, if you set them like this while they're growing, they'll, they'll get sort of short and fat. If you leave them sideways, they'll grow long and narrow. But if you, at least it seems to me, if you set them like this, they kind of take on a shorter, fatter shape. And you can make a jack-o'-lantern out of them, but they're also not bad eating. So, anyway, I thought I'd do a little comparison of these different three. And let's talk about my experience with them. And uh, maybe that might help you make that decision. So, for me, the uh, most important thing about growing a squash is uh, I don't really grow pumpkins per se. I mean these uh, these things are a pumpkin technically, I guess. But I mean I'm, I don't really care about decorating my front step. It's more about food. So these just happen to be a pretty good tasting uh, pumpkin that you can decorate stuff with. Squash and pumpkin. I'm going to use those terms interchangeably. They're pretty much the same thing. Um, anyway, food uh, flavor is really important to me. If they don't taste good, they don't have a good texture. I'm really not interested. But the very next thing that's important is their ability to store, storage. I also like them to get really big, but it doesn't really matter so much. It's storage. And also, I guess, a third consideration is how easy is it to prepare that into food, you know, get the skin off and get the seeds out. And also, um, in terms of the, you know, relative to the size and the weight of the pumpkin, how much flesh are you actually getting? Is, is the thing all skin and seeds? Or is it to get a lot of flesh and good flesh in it? So I thought I'd compare these three different ones. So uh, let's start with the, uh, the Georgia Candy Roaster. Yeah. So this is a Georgia Candy Roaster. Um, it is, of the three things I grew this year, the best tasting hands down. Uh, in terms of that thing about ratio of flesh to seeds to skin sort of thing, this is all flesh. It's really, really, really not throwing away a lot of weight. Most of the weight is good eating sort of thing, a very good tasting, very sweet pumpkin. But in, stern, in terms of storage capacity, uh, this is the worst of the three I grew. It's basically the first week of January, and this has got a real, um, over here, a soft spot, right? And the end has gone a bit soft. And uh, this one here, which is probably my biggest, it's it's gone all to pieces. Like it's, it, I don't know how much of that's gonna be salvageable. And uh, just just so I show, it's after I shot the video, but I thought I'd just come back. That Georgia candy roaster that was the worst. It had the most mold, the most mildew, the most nasty looking. Um, and once I cut all that away, that's the inside, right? And there's the outside, right? So I mean, I had to sacrifice some of it, and it would have been better to have done this uh, a few weeks ago before it was this bad. But uh, it's still fine, still perfectly salvageable. It smells fresh, um, you know, totally salvageable. So, I mean, that's not the end of the world. I mean, I've chosen today since I just noticed this today. There was a, a couple, my wife had some stuff stuck here. So, I, normally, I, the, the door to the garage is right 
where you're standing. So I come in and see these every day. So I do a quick inspection, but there've been some stuff sort of piled up here. <laughs> uh, this is my garage, I guess, but it's, uh, it's about half the size of a the garage I would prefer to have. And since my wife uses it sort of as a storage room, it's half again <laughs> what it needs to be. Uh, so it's, uh, anyway, that's life, right? So anyway, um, you know, I, I took, <coughs> uh, I, I just started doing this, this where I get the idea for this video today is I, I, I'm cutting up the Georgie Cannon Roaster, all of them today, throwing away what's uh, no good and taking what's salvageable, right? So this isn't, doesn't look bad, right? It's one of them. I probably threw away, oh, 30% of what I'd normally get out of it. I had to throw that away. So I should have done this maybe a couple weeks ago. Um, so I'm just going to, Bake that on the oven, assuming the power doesn't go out, and uh, mash it up, and put it in containers, and put it in the freezer, and take it out and use it as I need. It's just another way to store it. It's so much easier just to stick it on a shelf in a garage. If, if, I don't know people are going to ask me what the temperature is in the garage here. It's, it's today. It's, um, it's it's like a snowstorm, so it's uh, usually we get snowstorms when it's around zero C, and that's exactly what it is outside today. Zero Celsius. The garage is around eight Celsius. If it was minus ten outside, it would be like five Celsius in here, above zero. Uh, so, candy roaster, Georgia candy roaster, best tasting, great yield in terms of what you're getting flesh-wise. Um, but in terms of all the things I've grown and, and, and the conditions under, that I'm storing them under, not so good. Uh, now, there's lots of reasons that that could be the case. Perhaps the skin isn't, uh, maybe I should have harvested them a week earlier or a week later. There's all kinds of considerations like that. I think I harvested them at the right time, but, uh, you know, who knows, right? Uh, so the next one I might talk about is this, um, whatever this one's called. <laughs> it's some, uh, I'll put the name up on the screen <laughs> and I'll leave it to you to find where to get them. Um, so this one here is, uh, stores are really well. Sometimes these keep all the way till March for me. Uh, usually February, but some of them will keep to March. So they start getting soft around the ends, around the end of February. That's not bad. Um, you get a, a lot out of it. A good portion of this is meat as opposed to seeds and space and stuff like that. Um, they really easy to grow, really robust, store really well, and they taste pretty good. I mean, they taste way better than a pumpkin sort of thing, right? They don't taste as good as a Georgie candy roaster. They don't taste as good as a, you know, like a, but, a butternut squash. They don't taste as good as that. Um, they don't taste as good as some other squashes, but they're they're, they're acceptably good. <laughs> I guess I'd put them that way. If you bake it in the oven, a little salt and pepper and brown sugar, they're good. They're fine, right? So in terms of like a re very reliable yield, good storage, edible, and you can also decorate with them, these are really good all-around pumpkin. Pumpkins like these. Uh, now, the last of these, and I've got hardly got any of these left. The, uh, the Warted Hubbard. So, I would say that in terms of uh, storage, these are excellent, so far anyway. They're, they're doing way better than the, uh, the Georgia Candy Roaster, right? Um, I got, this is my biggest one. And when I mentioned that I was growing these this year, lots of people said, oh, geez, these things keep for years. I don't know if they'll keep for years, but this one is still, there's not the slightest bit of um, compromise at all. These are really good tasting, store really, really well. Uh, Yield-wise, I found the um, Georgia Candy Roaster to be more prolific. I got more squash per plant, that sort of thing. Um, these are very good tasting. Uh, now, when you're when you're cutting them up, a good deal of the weight is thrown out. I'd say half of this probably ends up in the compost, perhaps. Um, it's got a big cavity in the inside for the seeds, at least that's been my experience so far. Um, so it's you're not getting as much meat per per squash as with the Georgie Candy Roaster, but it's a very good tasting and seems to store really well, so that's a good balance. It's just, it's just so hard to make these decisions. I mean, I, I gotta buy my seeds really soon. I'm gonna do a video on it like I did last year, um, but it's so hard because I like the Georgie Candy Roaster so much, um, but uh, it's not much use to me if I uh, it only keeps till January. Or, or perhaps I just won't grow as many, right? And I'll eat them all. Maybe I'll eat those right away and then save these for later. I mean, that's another consideration, right? You grow a uh, squash that only keeps to January, so you eat those first, and then you move into your, your other ones that, that seem to keep better. 
So uh, anyway, and of course there's, you know, these aren't the only squash in town, so to speak, right? There's lots of different things to choose from. It's just a, a couple uh, couple examples. But the, the point is that there's a lot of things you have to think about when you're, if it's important to you to grow as much as your own food as possible, um, growing squashes and pumpkins are a really good uh, crop to grow because they, they're so easy to keep. You just, if you've got a place that's the right temperature, you know, below eight Celsius, give or take, fridge refrigerator temperature, um, not too cold, doesn't freeze, just stick them on a shelf. And they should keep, right? And each squash has a different storage ability. Anyway, so just a few considerations about squash. Uh, it's, it's a great plant to grow if you're if you're trying to grow as much of your own food as possible. The you know calorie crops are the name of the game. I grow a lot of potatoes. I grow a lot of squash. I grow a lot of carrots, parsnips, things like that because they all store well and they're easy to store, right? I mean, having to cut these all up and freeze them and put them in my freezer—that's work. Um, I'm doing I'm only doing that to, to salvage so I don't lose everything here But just taking a squash and sticking it on a shelf <laughs> Until I want to eat it. That's easy. So I mean, you stick a seed in the ground It grows you pick the thing you stick it on a shelf You know as long as you've got the right conditions and a storage place a cold room a root cellar or a garage that Stays around the right temperature. Uh, you know as long as you can share all of that That is a pretty easy way to grow food, you know um, there's lots of people that talk about different types of winter gardening. Um, I really don't have a lot of success in the winter here because it's just so uh, overcast and we don't have a lot of sun. Uh, so uh, I and I don't want to get a diatribe about that because I've talked about it a million times. <laughs> For me, it's, it's just grow as much stuff as you can when things want to grow, and then find different ways to save them. And tend to I tend to favor the things that are store easily and are, have very little work. To store instead of canning everything and putting things in jars I think just sticking you know this is its own jar <laughs> right so that's a lot easier for me so I hope you found that interesting if you did please like share subscribe check out my podcast maritimegardening.com and until next time get out there get at it have fun in your garden thanks for watching <laughs>